You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. A couple of things that uh, Brian Kelly pointed out during his press conference as well. I, I did ask the question about Sage Ryan, and I was interested. I wanted an update on Sage Ryan and then what role he was going to play. Here was the, the update from, Sage, uh, from Brian Kelly on Sage Ryan, considering the last time we saw him, the media saw him, he was injured in Tiger Stadium in that scrimmage. Here was the update. He's fine. It was a stinger, but it, it cleared up, and he was able to, to get back into practice the next day. So the great news is, just a stinger, was back at practice the next day, nothing severe, Sage Ryan's playing. So I also asked, we saw him play corner, is he corner, is he safety, what's he doing? We are going to use him both at the nickel and corner position. So he, he's been cross-trained. A lot of the technical work has been at corner uh, because he knows the nickel position really well. But he's one of our fastest players. You know, he's, he's typically in, you know, when we're talking about GPS speed, he's typically in the, in the high 21 range, and he's topped out at 22. So he can run. He's smart. But I think the thing that has separated him is his ability to tackle in space. So, you know, he's going to play to the field, and I think he gives us um, some great flexibility. No, no, largely, we, we tend to, ex especially the beginning of a season when optimism abounds for everybody, we tend to accentuate our favorite team strengths, and we tend to uh, diminish or explain away weaknesses. And I don't think that's an LSU thing. I think that's an everywhere thing. If you go to College Station today, they're all, I'm sure, hyping up Connor Wigman when we... Don't really know what he's going to be. Um, I'm concerned about LSU secondary. I am. I think that you, that has to be a very real, very valid concern. You were not great in the secondary a year ago. I think you had you, you were you were good, but you weren't elite. Um, and you lost everybody basically, and the fact that. You're trying to convert a player that's been a safety for his two years in Baton Rouge to cornerback tells you you're not settled with the guys you have playing cornerback. You're still looking for options there. And when you're staring at a challenge in Florida State with Jordan Travis, who is a fifth-year senior, or excuse me, a sixth-year senior, this is Jordan Travis's sixth collegiate season, and he's a guy that threw for over 3,000 yards last year. Um, yes, that's that's a concern. When they return their top receiver and a quarterback that threw for 3,000 yards last year, yes, I, I think you have to objectively look at LSU secondary and say, that's a concern. So for me, I think the bigger question is, how do you protect that secondary, and that's pass rush, and that's your offense scoring points. Well, I think LSU's offense is going to score points. I think they're going to score points on everybody they play because I think they are deep and talented and experienced and going to be really, really good offensively. Can they get a pass rush? I, I think that is going to be as important as, as anything on the defense. And, you know, Harold Perkins is going to be a part of that, a giant part of that. And while they've moved him to inside backer, um, you know, something Brian Kelly said today was sort of that while while Perkins is going to play inside, they're they're gonna move him around a ton. And that's gonna be a real challenge for defenses to to figure out what to do with Perkins. Harold's going to be able to impact the game in, in the things that we're going to do with him. He's going to move around. You won't see him just lining up in the middle of our defense. He's, he's going to be, where's Harold Perkins? And you're going to have to find him, and you're going to have to account for him, just like we're going to have to account for Jared Verse. You know, we're going to have to have a, many different ways to, to handle Jared Verse. You know, we're going to have to have slide and tight ends and chips and doubles and all kinds of things. He's, he's that good of a player, and they're going to have to find Harold Perkins as well. I mean, that's if, – if when the game ends on Sunday and T-Bob and I are sitting there at Don Juan doing whiskey and wine, and I look and I go, okay, I think LSU scores 30 points in this game. I, I do. I think LSU will, will probably score low 30s. Um, and, and I think the determining factor of whether or not LSU won the game is going to be were they able to impact 
Jordan Travis with a pass rush to get him off his spot, to make him uncomfortable. So I think when you look at TFLs, pressures, quarterback hits, sacks, that's going to be the stat that really tells you the story of the game from LSU's defensive perspective. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.